Yo guys, Glenn Shirishi here with the third episode of Shirishi Rambles, the segment on my channel where I just ramble about things for a few minutes. Starting off with a channel update, I will be buying a new laptop this Thursday, so this sort of means that some bigger videos will be delayed until Friday or Saturday, since I got FNM and Planeswalker Weekend at my locals. I will make sure to upload a test video with the specs that the new laptop will have, with the capture card to see how the new laptop will perform in terms of capturing footage. Now to get into some gaming news that I've collected over the few weeks that I want to talk about. Astral Chain now has key artwork showing up on the Nintendo Switch eShop, sporting a new logo and awesome artwork by Masakazu Katsura. I honestly cannot wait to hear more about this game before its release in uh, late August. Arc System Works and P-Cube revealed two new characters for Kill a Kill If. Those being the ultimate forms for Ryuko and Satsuki, being Senketsu Kisaragi and Junketsu Shinzui respectively. Now of course, if they are playable in-game, we have about three variations of Ryuko and Satsuki in the game. They also showed off gameplay for the story mode, with IGN having the scoop on the English dub one, which features music from the anime's OST, in which I hope you can use the anime soundtracks in fights and not have it limited to story segments. To round out the news, we, they also revealed version differences, with the Steam and PS4 version running at 1080p and 60 frames per second, while the Switch runs at 30 FPS at 1080p in TV mode and 720p 30 frames per second in handheld and tabletop mode. Along with the additional tidbits like the game not being altered in any way, shape or form for any of the versions, and the game being able to run on PCs with Windows 7, 8 or 10. But nothing, nothing much else in the way of requirements which are all to be announced. I will definitely cover the Nintendo Switch version on the channel and maybe in addition get the PS4 version to compare and contrast between the two console versions when it releases 26th of July worldwide. P-Cube also revealed that they are localizing the Taiwanese indie anime style action RPG Dusk Diver, which I have been looking forward to for months now. The game is already in early access on Steam, but P-Cube will handle the PS4 and Switch releases of the game. The game is set in Ximending, which is one of the most popular tourist spots in all of Taiwan and I hope I pronounced that name correctly, and it will feature Taiwanese and Japanese voice acting. Gameplay-wise, this game looks spectacular, and it is definitely one of the reasons I will cover the game when it hits the Switch this fall season. Honestly, this is an indie game worth looking forward to. Last off, I want to discuss my predictions for E3 2019. However, I will limit my predictions to a few of the companies, those being Microsoft, Nintendo, and Square Enix. Since Sony isn't going to show up in any sort of capacity as far as I'm aware. Starting off with Microsoft. I'm not going to expect much from them. Aside from them maybe showing off the new Xbox Scarlet along with some specific game announcements. Show off Halo, Forza and Gears as well as having a car on stage for Forza. Say some games are quote unquote exclusive. When you can easily get them on PC. And maybe you have like two or three announcements for Japanese games which will be multi-platform anyway. However, I will still check out their conference to see what will happen. On Square Enix's end, I think they will go all out with showing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, since new info is slated for June, and show off more new titles like Oninaki and so forth. However, I think the main thing for their conference will definitely be the FF7 Remake. Make no mistake about that. Finally, we get to Nintendo. My predictions for the Direct are simple. We can expect a few surprises, maybe some localization uh, announcements for games such as Persona 5 Scramble, The Snack World Treasurer's Gold, Yokai Watch 4, as well as more out of left field game announcements, as well as the second DLC for Smash Ultimate. The things for me that are set in stone already are Pokemon Sword and Shield, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Astral Chain, in which I expect those games to get adequate time in their Three House live segments at A3 with maybe some surprises there. And that's about it for the, this third episode of Shireishi Rambles. I am still testing around with this format, and I do hope that you guys enjoyed this attempt at a multiple topic type of video. Like, dislike, subscribe, do whatever you like. This is Glenn Shireishi here saying, stay sane and stay entertained. Peace.